Today's message is entitled, What Kingdom Life Looks Like. And last week in his message, uh, uh, Praise God for What He Has Done for Us, Dean recounted the, the overflow of blessings that God has given us through Jesus. Adoption is God's children, his glorious grace lavishly given us, and unity to all things in heaven and earth under Christ. God has given us both Jew and Gentile, everything needed for our salvation. Okay, that was from Dean's sermon last week. Now, today we're going to jump forward 14 verses from that and uh, read... Uh, this scripture, Ephesians 2, 4 to 10. And for context, these verses precede today's scripture uh, reading. What you just heard uh, Reuben read comes after these, directly after these. And the we and us that Paul is using refers to both Jews and Gentiles. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead, in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace that we're saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus through faith. And that faith is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This is God's doing, this giving of himself to us. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So remember what we just read, because we're going to, we're, the next verse begins with therefore, and the next verse follows what we just did, but a couple of things in the middle here. This is what we're going to cover today. We're, we're going to cover being separate from Christ, that in Jesus our unity and oneness with him, and being in unity and oneness in Christ is the life of the kingdom of God. Being separate from Christ. Paul said the Gentiles in the Ephesian church were without God in the world. So we'll read, that. we'll read that here. And this is continuing on now from those previous verses. Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done by, in the body by human hands, which means it was a physical thing. It wasn't so much a spiritual thing. It was a physical thing. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. So notice that they were formerly were separate, divided, separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel. And Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. We, we take that from what Jesus said. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. This is Jesus talking to uh, Pilate, but now my kingdom is from another place, from heaven, at that point in time. And the Apostle John admonishes us not to love the world. He says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And we're told in scripture that Satan is God of this world. So we've talked about this some, so what can you guys tell me about Satan and the way he works? He's the deceiver, yes. What else? He plants discord in the body. He plants discord in the body. 
He plants discord all over if he can. <laughs> He's the discord planter, okay? <laughs> He's the father of lies. Yep. What else do we remember? A murderer. Murderer, yes, it, it says that in John. A deceiver, yep. A destroyer of everything that's God. He seeks to destroy everything that's God. He seeks to separate us from God. Okay, let's, let's take a little further look at this. Uh, and, and this is speaking of Satan. And the great dragon, that's Satan, was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. I told you. <laughs> the deceiver of the whole world. Now, we nailed deceiver right on the head in, in our little talk here just a bit ago. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down, thrown down with him. Even if our, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. That's what Satan is trying to do. Blind us from everything that is of God to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel. And of course, gospel means good news. I would have preferred, I think I've said this before, they'd never use the word gospel, but always use good news. And when I say they, I'm talking about the translators. The good news of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Satan lies attempting to keep darkness from being illuminated by the light of truth, by the light of Jesus who is the light of the world. He deceives and to blind minds from the truth of the good news of Jesus. And he wants to keep us in this darkness from uh, the good news of Jesus eternally being King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Lord. Division and separation is of Satan. So here are some notable divisions. Greeks, Cicero, writing somewhere, I don't know, he died in 43 BC, I think. So he, he wrote sometime before that, that uh, to the Greeks, there were two uh, categories, Greeks and barbarians. And the Romans, the Romans, the Romans had the same thought. They were, there were the Romans and there were the barbarians. Of course, we know about the Jews and the Gentiles. And, and they were further, further um, called the uncircumcised. Of course, the Jews were the circumcised. And today we have Israelis and Palestinians, Ukrainians, Russians, North Koreans, South Koreans, poverty, plenty. And we have Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Political division is a current one. It's a hot one. And that's not just here in the US. This is happening in Europe. It's happening in countries around the world. And since it is so current, I just can't neglect to talk about it. As we, as we saw earlier, Satan is the god of this world. And he deceives to divide and destroy. We've already said that. This is a season of slander and its repetition. Much slander is going back and forth both ways. It comes from all sides and it goes to all sides. And if we remember, God does not take kindly to slander. He judges his slander quite harshly. So, we need to be cautious, and I'm speaking to myself too. We need to be cautious, I believe, that we not repeat untruths others have told. Because if we do that, we're spreading slander. So if we don't absolutely know whether something negative about someone is true or not, we'd be wise not to repeat it. So this is the season of lies, half-truth, and spin doctoring. There's a lot of spinning going around. <laughs> of course, there's a lot of lying going around. 
and a lot of half-truths, and three-quarter truths, and one-quarter truths. And we're going to have three and a half more months of that in this country. And demonizing others. It gets so serious. The wall of hostility in this division gets so serious, others are demonized. And walls of hostility are, are built. The truth is, no political party is the kingdom of God. And the truth is, no political party represents the kingdom of God. Those are worldly kingdoms that we're talking about here. Our citizenship is in heaven. That is our, the most important citizenship we have. Our citizenship in heaven as children of God. As as already citizens of the kingdom of God, as Jesus grows the kingdom of God. And it's something that Jesus does. Christ followers follow Christ, who sits at the right hand of the Father with all of the Father's authority. He's sitting there as King Jesus. We have a lot of songs praising Jesus as our King. It is, it is him to whom we should give our total allegiance. Okay, going on. In Jesus, our unity and oneness with him. We read this in Ephesians 2, 13 to 16. We're continuing now with the scripture that Reuben read. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. What brings us close to Jesus is his blood. It reconciles us to God. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one. And here it's speaking of Jews and Gentiles. And has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and its regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. So Jesus' purpose is to bring Jews and Gentiles together. And in one body, that would be the body of Christ, the church, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. It's Jesus' purpose to bring unity to, to the two, reconciling them by the sacrifice, his sacrifice for all of us. Jesus brought unity, oneness, and one body, the church. And we're, fel we're fellow citizens with God's people, members of his household. We read that in Ephesians 2, 18 to 22. For through him, Jesus, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together, and it rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So Jesus is in, in charge. We're joined together. We're built together. And Paul's talking about the ecclesia, And that's just the Greek word for, that's translated church. He's talking about the church, the body of Christ, in which the Holy Spirit is growing the kingdom of God. God lives by his spirit, it says. And major point number three, being in unity, oneness in Christ is kingdom of God life. And we read this in Colossians 1, verses 12 to 13. Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light, 
For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, that would be Satan's world, and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Unity in Christ is central to the kingdom of God. This, shouldn't be, this should be a no-brainer because God in himself is a unified being of three persons. He's a communion of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God. That Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God is a communion. Might have been a better way to say that. And in Christ, we are one with Jesus and God the Father. If we read uh, Jesus' prayer, his, 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 uh, his priestly prayer, high priestly prayer, in, which is all of John 17, towards the uh, end, he prays that we are one with him and with the Father. If we are one with Jesus, we are also one with the Father. And we're guided by one Holy Spirit. God the Father and God the Son share their spirit with us to transform us into God's image, the Imago Dei in Latin. God's spirit is always about unity with Jesus and God the Father. And that spirit is the very nature of God. He's love. The Holy Spirit is always there urging love, care, concern for, for others. The Holy Spirit is there always urging us to be close, tied, closely tied to God. And we share in God's love. God so loves us, we're told, that he gave us Jesus. This is a, something of a paraphrase of John 3.16. I think you probably recognized it. And we live in a constant shower of God's love and his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit moves us to love. And we pour out God's love to others. It's what we do if we're in Christ. If we're in Christ, that's what we do. Because his, if we're in Christ, we're, the Holy Spirit is, is operating within us. We're led by the Holy Spirit. I, well, I titled this message, What the Kingdom Life Looks Like. But I almost titled it, What Oneness in Christ Looks Like. They're, they're, they're so related. They're just so related. Well, so this is, the, this is my final um, title for today. It has the subtitle, What Kingdom of Life Looks Like, Unity, Oneness in Christ is the answer. Major points today. Separate from Christ, we are in Satan's world, his world of deception, division, and destruction. And that's an eternal destruction if we don't, if we don't separate ourselves from Satan. The, the choice for us and all of humanity is God or Satan and his divisive world system. And being in unity and oneness in Christ is the life of the kingdom of God. It is, going, it is the, the eternal life that he holds out for us because he loves us and wants us to be with him. So to take home this from James 7 to 8. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Just as a, as a closing blessing today, I want to read Ephesians 3, verses 16 to 21. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's God's desire for us.